What's going on YouTube? James Prigioni, coming back at you. It's April 10th. It's a beautiful day here in Jersey. 85 degrees. Just gonna give you guys an update, a few things. In the garden, uh, first off, we got uh, our first little cell, which is looking, it's looking pretty good. Uh, got a little polyculture going on here. We got some broccoli in the back. And then uh, some green bean right here. Uh, a little more broccoli up here. Underneath the green bean, we got a uh, lettuce growing. Behind that, a broccoli. Behind that broccoli, we have one of my favorites of the garden this year, a nasturtium. Just love how the leaf set just like sits on the side. I think it's just beautiful. Uh, we got some carrots in the back. You can see. Hopefully. So this little polyculture needs to be working so far. Show you guys uh, another one we got back here. Everything's popping up. It's just such a beautiful day. We're happy that we got the seeds in early enough that we could have the green plants uh, to absorb the solar energy and, the, and just photosynthesize rather than just being seeds in the ground. So we got some peas back there you can see. Some onions coming up. Green beans. Some more pea. Pea right up here. If you guys don't know what that looks like. Uh, looks like a brassica. I'm not sure what kind right here. See some of the red romaine lettuce, just looks beautiful already. Right in the middle. You can see it against the other colors. Looks nice. Uh, another cell we got planted over here. Everything seems to be liking it. A bunch of carrots in there. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you guys, which we were pretty excited about, is uh, just some evidence of how we've already got the mycorrhizae association going on in the garden and how that's sending out the fungal hyphae and how uh, that's already working out for us. Here we got, uh, right here you can see mushrooms. They're popping up everywhere in here. Another mushroom right here. I'm not sure what kind of mushroom this is because we didn't uh, put in inoculate. We didn't put in mushroom spores or anything. This is just natural. This just happened naturally. So if you don't know, uh, the, when the mushrooms, this is just the fruiting part of the mushroom, almost like the flower. And the hyphae is the almost like the root system that goes throughout the ground here. So. It's almost like the internet of the soil connecting everything together. So underneath all these mushrooms there should be a nice layer of hyphae the, with the mycorrhizae. So this cell should do good once it starts going. Another couple more nasturtiums. And there, one of those cells we transplanted, we're going to reseed that because it didn't do as well. And then a uh, direct seeded one, another direct seeded. I'll step back for you guys. Show you a view of the whole thing. I just love how uh, all the characters of the plants in this cell is just coming out. You can just, they're really just showing exactly what they are already. Here's a better view. At the back, you can see things are greening up here, slowly but surely. We got a bunch of strawberries in the back, a few different kinds Sequoia, Old Star. Uh, then some ones we have in our garden we just took. Now, this is a bigger cell, uh, planted densely also, you know, small polycultures. This is when we have a few maple trees in also, about five or six in there. Once they get a little bigger, we'll probably transplant them into something, see if people want them or find something to do with them. Another, another cell popping up, another one in the back. It's been nice because we haven't had have to cover these last night. We're not going to have to cover them for a while. Hopefully, maybe not ever again because lowest we're supposed to get in the next 10 days is about 42 degrees at night. So, as long as it's above 40, then we'll probably leave the covers off and let the plants just take it naturally. You can see how much the strawberry plant has woken up in the past two days. It's just, it's sending out new leaves everywhere. It's crowning here, you can see. Here, it's crowning, it's, it's crowning everywhere. There's a few spots where it's already put out brand new leaves. Yeah, this is a brand new leaf from this year. You can tell how green it is. Crowned down there. Hoping to get some strawberries this year. This is all seeded. These two rows are, uh, that front row I think is potatoes. And all plants that are companions with potatoes. And I think this is onions down here. More. Another cell popping up. This is another one with a lot of green beans and stuff in here. A bunch of carrots. Still some grass in there that I'm gonna have to weed out, but should be work peas in the back. 
Similar saw over here. And then, uh, this is that window saw that my brother made that's working excellent, actually. You can see we got some corn popping up here. Some onions. More corn in the back. It's uh, early golden bantam corn, which is a kind that is early, obviously. So we're hoping to get some early corn this year. We got about I see about seven of them popped up so far. They seem to be liking it in here a lot. And let me take you into the cold frame greenhouse now. Show you how things are looking in there. And we moved a lot of the transplants out into the hugel culture bed. I'll show you that after. But it's warm in here, it's very moist. I've been coming in here and keeping the humidity high because it's getting so warm I had to keep the window open. So it's drying out quickly so we've been coming here and spraying. I've just been spraying the whole place kind of wetting it down and it's kept the humidity pretty nice. You can see we're at uh, about a little, a little over 60% humidity. A little over 80 degrees which is very nice. Uh, the plants seem to be liking it. Everything is looking pretty good. You can see they do like the conditions. The rocks are helps, helping stabilize the temperature, whether it's hot or cold. And uh, this is the more recently seeded one. It's all popping up. Everything's popped. So we'll be moving, lifting this whole frame and moving it within the next couple days so that we can directly seed somewhere else because these plants should be able to make it out in the, in the conditions without the frames anymore. So this was all stuff that I transplanted. These were all popped, so I transplanted them out to the whole culture bed more seed, a bunch of stuff that can be transplanted in a few days, more lettuces and such that can be transplanted, more pop seed, more pop seed, and then a lot of stuff up here, all different kinds, and we're, we seed every single day pretty much, not too much that we kill ourselves, but a decent amount. So tomorrow I'll be transplanting another 20 C, 25, 30 plants out into the hugel bed and other places throughout the yard. And then later in the day I'll reseed those cups. And then we'll keep doing that. And we also seed directly into the ground uh, pretty much every day. So I'll show you another spot. Maybe the hugel culture bed in the back. Freeze feels great. Yeah, Jack Spirko was recently talking about the Mycorrhizae Association and its importance. If you guys are interested in about Mycorrhizae and how important it is, you can read the book Agricultural Testament, where uh, Sir Albert Howard has studied it. He's been studying it since 1940, basically. He's known about it. So here's the Who Culture Bed. Here's the plants I transplanted yesterday into the Who Culture Bed. It's almost like you can't see them, but... Oh, they'll come up. There's your maid. There's lettuces. There's some brassicas, lettuce, there's giant old spinach, more spinach and lettuce, spinach, another brassica. Here you guys in the back, see this is all seeded, everything that's black has been seeded. So I seeded this about two days ago. This I transplanted out today. You can see it's doing a little polyculture, some lettuce with onions. All different kind of plants supporting. You can see how uh, in the hugel culture beds how much space they save. For instance, this is uh, maybe two foot here to there, but when you use the diagonal, you get a lot more than two feet of space because you get the whole uh, longer length of it. Can't think of the word exactly right now, but it it works out for space. You plant up the bed, not just in the top. You plant up the rows of the bed. So I got about two, three, four different kinds of plants just in that two foot space go, going upwards and there's plenty more. I was in the station we're hoping we'll climb up the fence. This was all seeded two days ago. This was seeded yesterday. This was seeded today I believe. More also seeded. Seeded and then this was transplanted out two days ago. You can see the corn we transplanted out here. The early, more of the early golden bantam corn. So plant them in little groups so that they can all pollinate each other. 
and then again planting up the sides of the hula culture beds. The plants know which way is up, so they know where they're going. As long as you get them in there, they know what they're doing. Seems to be going pretty well. Uh, that's the back view of everything. Just giving an update, letting you guys know how things are going. So just comment if you have any questions or anything. Thanks for tuning in, guys. James Perzioni's out.